India's economy is among the fastest growing in the world. According to estimates, it may overtake Germany and Japan to become the third largest country by 2030, after only the United States and China, according to Greek City Times. With its rapid growth of 6.3% annually and its vast human capital, which has overtaken China for the first time, analysts estimate that by the end of the decades, it could even double its GDP. In this regard, India's goal is to construct a modern economic corridor of its own, emulating China's Belt and Road Initiative. The concept calls for the construction of a corridor to facilitate the transportation of goods from the sea and land to the Middle East, where they will eventually arrive in Central and Northern Europe via the Mediterranean. A key stop on this route could be Greece, and India's opportunity arises from the Greek government's intention to put three important Greek ports under the hammer. The Lavrio port saw the opening of a tender procedure in early March, which included the sale of 50% plus one of the Lavrio port organization. Because the port of Alexandrupoli is a strategically significant location, the developments surrounding it also have a geopolitical component. Tate is now organizing the process to attract investors, and the port of Patras is the next to be ready for exploitation. A major step toward enhancing safety laws and monitoring of military aircraft operations within the nation has been taken by the Indian government with the introduction of the draft Indian Military Airworthiness Bill 2024. This bill has generated conversations and debates among legislators and aviation specialists, it is anticipated to be introduced in Parliament this year. Long-standing issues with the airworthiness and safety procedures controlling Indian military aircraft are intended to be addressed by the proposed legislation. The bill prioritizes safety measures and conforms to international standards in an effort to create strong policies and processes that will benefit both defense installations and aircraft manufacturers. A significant clause in the law suggests creating the Center for Military Airworthiness and Certification CEMILAC, a specialized regulatory agency. This authority will be formally empowered to supervise the airworthiness certification procedure for all military aircraft, as it is currently operating under the DRDO. The duties assigned to CEMILAC will involve conducting thorough inspections, audits, and assessments to guarantee adherence to set safety standards and technical specifications. The draft Indian Military Airworthiness Bill 2024 marks a promising step towards a more robust safety framework for Indian military aviation. As the bill progresses through Parliament, open discussions and careful consideration will be essential to ensure its effectiveness in safeguarding the lives of pilots and crew members. According to the media reports, Tata Electronics has partnered with two Indian manufacturers in Bengaluru and Pune to build the capacity to work on creating extremely complicated and sophisticated high-precision equipment required to construct the iPhone case. The machinery is used on the production lines of independent contractors who work with large international companies such as Apple. It is projected that the step will significantly accelerate the government's $300 billion electronics export target by 2025. This occurs at a time when Apple is attempting to diversify its manufacturer base in order to lessen its reliance on China, given the geopolitical circumstances. The Tata Group is testing these equipment at their Hoser site in stages, according to the article. Expanding the company's local capacity is one of the goals since it aims to improve the nation's ecosystem rather than merely construct fences. In order for the corporation to lessen its reliance on certain parts, these machines are merely one of many inputs that go into manufacturing an enclosure or component. The program lays the groundwork for future exports in addition to increasing domestic output. Additionally, it can help India achieve its ambitious ambition of exporting $300 billion worth of electronics by 2025. According to Rajesh Kumar Singh, Secretary of the Indian Ministry of Commerce and Industries Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, Russia has invested $1.26 billion in India's aerospace, defense, chemical, oil and gas, and other vital industries. Our data indicates that Russia has invested approximately $1.26 billion in direct foreign investment in various industries, including aerospace and defense, chemical, oil and gas, and railways, he stated at a symposium. Singh further stated that India intends to increase its collaboration with Russia in the areas of metals, oil and gas, key natural resources, and industrial equipment linked to ports, railroads, and the shipping sector. The Tata Group and Powerchip Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation PSMC, have started working together to create 14 nanometer NM chip technology. Their current efforts to produce 28 nanometers nodes at their semiconductor production facility in Dalara, Gujarat, are supplemented by this initiative. 
Compact electronic gadgets like tablets, laptops, and smartphones are perfect candidates for the 14 nanometers chip technology because it provides improved efficiency, power, and speed. In addition, both businesses are aggressively developing domestic technologies for the processes of assembly, testing, marking, and packing ATMP. High-performance computers, electric vehicles, EVs, and consumer electronics are just a few of the industries that the Dollar Factory will serve with its monthly capacity of 50,000 wafers and its yearly production of 3 billion chips. It will fulfill strategic and commercial objectives, and the first chip is expected to be released by the end of 2026. As the Panama-flagged tanker traveled across the Red Sea from Primorsk, Russia to Vadnar, India, it was ambushed by Houthi rebels, who were stationed in Yemen. After INS Kochi intercepted the ship, a helicopter conducted an aerial survey to evaluate the situation. For the purpose of assessing residual danger, an explosive ordnance disposal team was sent aboard Andromeda. The crew is safe, and the ship is sailing for the Indian port as planned. According to the Security Agency for UK Maritime Trade Operations, the attack happened southwest of the Yemeni port of Mocha. It said that there was damage from what is thought to have been two missiles in the second strike on the ship. According to a news agency, the tanker Andromeda Star is currently registered in the Seychelles and is involved in trade with Russia. Mohammed Saklain Umar Dawood, 22, of Jamnagar, was apprehended by the Gujarat Anti-Terrorism Squad ATS on Sunday. Dawood is a suspected spy from Pakistan. According to ATS sources, the accused maintained communication with Pakistan's spy agency, Inter-Services Intelligence ISI, or the Pakistani Army. During the investigation, one Pakistani national, Kishore, also known as Savai Jagdish Kumar Ramvani, came to light. Mohammed Zaklain had made multiple calls to Ramvani on his WhatsApp number, according to a senior official of the ATS. According to the official, they are attempting to determine whether a sleeper cell is operating during India's Lok Sava elections. A senior ATS official declared, we have booked the accused for espionage and waging war against the nation. According to ATS sources who spoke with the Mirror, they discovered a SIM card that Askar Ajimodi from Jamnagar had bought during technical monitoring. According to the official, Askar had activated WhatsApp calling by obtaining an OTP and sending it to one Lobshankar Maheshwari of Tarapur in the Anand district of central Gujarat. He had also activated his cell phone SIM card. Subsequently, as per Maheshwari's directives, the phone was sent to Kishore in Pakistan via his sister Sushila, who had previously visited the country, an ATS representative stated. Gujarat ATS alleged that after trying to penetrate Pakistan in 1999, India launched a war over Kargil, where ISI agents used the WhatsApp number to contact their sleeper cells. India will never give up, according to Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, who stated on Sunday that discussions between China and India are proceeding amicably and in a positive atmosphere. Singh, who is in Ahmedabad to support BJP candidates running in the Lok Sava elections, stated that India wishes to keep cordial ties with its neighbours and has grown to be a strong military nation. According to him, negotiations between China and India are proceeding amicably, regardless of the difficulties at hand. The Minister of Defence also voiced confidence in the future growth of India's defence exports, which surpassed Rs 21,000 crore in the fiscal year 2023-2024. That is all from YKS team for now, thanks for watching and keep supporting.